Boy, I'm getting better and better all the time, aren't I? <laughs> You're keeping that thing in your hand at least. This is the Top 40 Timeline, uh, what do we call it, podcast or uh, whatever. Yeah. So it's where we look at, uh, oh, we have some funny stories and some rock, oh, rock and roll. Oh, some funny ones trivia. this week, I got to tell you. Yeah, yeah. But right off the top, uh, I'd like to say uh, condolences to the family of Bobby Caldwell. That's going to be loud. Uh, a blue-eyed soul singer whose smooth touch camouflaged uh, many other things. He died on Tuesday following a long illness. He was uh, 71, and his wife Mary Caldwell announced his death on Twitter. What You Won't Do For Love was Bobby's, uh, I guess his, his lone Billboard Top 40 hit, defining single in the late 70s, soft rock, occupying a place between mellow adult contemporary and sultry quiet storm rhythm and blues. And, you know, it's he's just another one of those guys we add to the list of the one-hit wonder list, you know. It's uh, uh, the, the 70s was a big time. 70s and 80s, I'd say early 80s, big time for uh, one-hit one wonders. You, you, know? could, yeah. you could talk all night on the one-hit wonders of the Ab 70s. Absolutely. Off Wild Cherry. Yeah. Play that funky music, yeah. white boy. All right, you know. welcome, everybody. Like Russ said, this is our, uh, you know, Top 40 timeline. It's just a fun you know giddy kind of show lots of information you're going to learn some stuff today i guarantee you with the trivia because we learn stuff every week oh but, absolutely but we want to introduce our newest member you're probably wondering who this other person is sitting in between us this is uh, amanda basant and she's joining uh, us uh Bassin. Hi, Bassin. Hey. Bassin. i'm glad you make mistakes too <laughs> basant you'll get to know it oh we'll i'll get to, get know, to it. know it eventually just like you know the phone number <laughs> uh, that's right. Yeah. So uh, welcome to the show. We we just have a fun time here. Uh, we have some funny stories. We got lots of trivia for you today. Thanks to Leah, Miss Leah Lywood. I'm Lee Lakin, and uh, who are we brought to you by this week, buddy? Yeah, I didn't see that. Uh, we're brought to you by Saskatchewan Tourism this week, and uh, might not want to go there the, yet. That's the place. I <laughs> know, not right now. Or you can watch your dog run away for there, a day. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, you can watch your dog walk away for a couple of weeks as a matter of fact some parts of Saskatchewan and that show Corner Grass uh, on Corner TV grass, yeah. um, it, that's the way Saskatchewan is man. pretty much yeah, out in the rural areas pretty I'll much you make sure you keep your gas tank full Back I'll tell up. you that right now lock the doors when you go through small towns that too <laughs> just kidding guys just yeah. kidding no it's uh, you know it's funny I, I spent uh, eight years traveling in the U.S. driving uh, most of it and uh, then I got transferred up to Canada Wow, what a vast difference tra traveling across Canada as opposed to traveling across the states. Like even in that same direct line, when you're going across, you know, North Dakota and yep. and Minnesota and all mm -hmm. that area, and Wyoming and all that stuff, the terrain isn't that much different than it is just north of the border, mm -hmm. where you know Trans Canada Highway is. But uh, you know, it's it's a lot of distance between towns yeah. as opposed to the U.S. Down there, you've got. You know, you run into a small town every yeah. half an hour, 45 minutes, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Out there, you can go two hours, two and a half hours yeah. without seeing Jack. I know. <laughs> All right, let's get to our first funny story. A uh, man was arrested, and it was after demanding a dollar in a bank robbery and waiting for police. A Utah <laughs> man really wanted to get himself arrested. I guess he was tired of sleeping in the cold. Oh, Utah wow. police said Donald Santa Croach... Santa Cruz? I guess so. Santa Cruz? Sounds good to me. Yeah. 65 was arrested after he allegedly demanded a dollar from a bank employee and refused to leave. <laughs> he allegedly entered a Wells Fargo bank near 300 Main South in, uh, in Salt Lake City uh, Monday morning, uh, presented a note to the bank teller, and, and it read, Please pardon me for doing this, <laughs> but this is a robbery, and please give me a dollar. Thank you. <laughs> the employees well, compiled and asked the Santa Crow to leave, but he refused, according to uh, NBC.com. He even allegedly told employees to call police and then sat down and waited for them. Santa <laughs> Croak allegedly said that if he gets out of jail, he'd rob another bank and ask for more money until he was sent to federal prison. <laughs> it's what? not quite clear why he was so adamant about going to federal prison, but he was booked in Salt Lake County Metro Jail around 6.15 15 p.m. on a felony robbery charge, but then was released. <laughs> so the poor bugger can't even get a night in jail. Oh That's God. unreal, man. 
we had a guy in Acton that did that. When yeah. I was growing up, and he would get out in the spring, and he would stay in where the golf course is now in Acton, mm -hmm. the, the, right? And back then it was called the Ponderosa. And he'd pitch a tent, and he'd stay there all summer, and then he would come into town, and he would rob one of the banks. So oh, that, I remember that guy. Remember yeah. him? He rode yeah. his bike all over town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and he always timed it just right so that he'd get put in jail for the winter. And he always just did that that little misdemeanor that would get him that wow. four or five, six months type of thing in jail. Oh, then wow. he'd get back out, get three, four months out in the nice weather, and then be gone again. So, yeah, it, it does happen. We'd like to, <laughs> it does happen. We'd like to remind you that our stories are found on Big Daddy's Morning Funnies on Facebook, and it's been around for, God, 10 years now. Yeah, at least. And uh, if you ever want to spend an evening just breezing through there, you know, yeah, you will keep a smile on your oh, face. Oh, God, God. That's and, for sure. Yeah, because it's a clean site. We don't get into anything dirty in it because we broadcast most of the stuff off. But uh, it's great memes and great stories and uh, stuff that I dig up every week. Here's another one, and this isn't really all that funny. It's more amazing than anything else. An elderly California man can thank croissants for keeping him alive while he was trapped for a week thanks to that big snowstorm they had down in California. Six feet. Yeah. Six feet yeah. of snow. Oh I just God. can't <laughs> believe this story, though, because be I, can't, I can't believe this guy got stuck like that. Jerry Jurette. 81. 81 years old, no God bless him. him. He was trapped in his car clo uh, close to a week, a week, in a snowbank on a California highway. Wow. How can that happen? <laughs> That's oh seriously. God. Like, he had uh, apparently headed from his home in Big Pine, California, on February the 24th uh, to return to his family home in uh, Gardnerville, Nevada, normally a three-hour drive. Yeah. And according to his uh, grandson, Christian, uh, the man thought he could beat the impending storm that CNN had reported. At some point, he accidentally veered onto a smaller road, and his SUV became stuck near Gilbert Pass, his uh, grandson told CNN. A light quilt and a hotel bath towel <laughs> were the only things that he had to keep himself warm. He would only turn on the car periodically to warm up a bit. Keep your eye... This is guy's 81 years old. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Significant snowfall around three feet fell in the area, knocking out power for many and burying roads in snow. And I mean burying. Oh, yeah. Because if you check out the Big Daddy's Morning Funny, you'll see the picture. The snow is a top of the car. Yeah. Okay? This guy was buried in snow. That's oh. insane. It is. It is. You know, we're, we're crying about, you know, a foot of snow here. These people were getting slammed. I saw pictures of... of Man, my height, after he'd shoveled out his front door and the snow was that high above him. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, are you kidding me? I used this to get that in Cornwall. We used to walk off the snow under the roof of our house. house. Yeah. <laughs> I remember... Nothing to get four or five feet. I remember yeah. sliding down my uh, second-story bedroom window and go play with my friends. Do you remember that? Yeah. I have never seen that much snow in my life. Hmm. Well, this last... Never. Right, this this last two years. that we had... I remember as a kid that we, that, that was normal. that was our winter. That was normal. That was our winter. That was all every day, constantly. Like it was nonstop. I mean, the snow banks out in front of my house were massive, <coughs> yeah. absolutely massive. We dug tunnels all the way through. You could. Well, I grew up in Mississauga, <coughs> basically England and Mississauga. But Mississauga uh, used to get uh, so much snow, and I remember. And you, you guys are from up here, Georgetown, Acton. You must have got even more snow oh, than yeah. I had oh, yeah. when I was a yeah. kid. You know? Oh, yeah. There's so, uh, you my know, mom worked in Brampton. Shop. She worked in Brampton and we lived in Acton. Yeah. And she'd leave Brampton and it was just rainy, kind of yeah. miserable out hit here and there was a foot of snow. Like, it was crazy. Let's get into some trivia, baby. A wee tidbit will kick it off here. Guitarist Steve Vai keeps bees, being the proud owner of several thriving colonies. Every Christmas, he harvests his signature fire garden honey giving jars to friends and family and selling the rest for charity. And uh, you want to tell us about Madonna? Don't you? Absolutely. In 1988, Madonna was quoted, there are still those people who no matter what I do, will always think of me as a little disco tart. 
<laughs> Have you seen Madonna lately with all the yeah, work she's done? Yeah, her face is all oh, puffy. Oh, I know. She looks like she's eating a lot of tarts. <laughs> you think? Do you think it's eating, though, or is it... No. Uh, no. It's, all it's cosmetic. cosmetic. It's cosmetic. It's cosmetic. Who's, that, who's that guy recently? Same thing. Oh, my God, the musician. Really narrow face, and he looks the same way. Yeah. Cheeks are puffy and... and mm. What are you talking about? Ah. I'm trying to figure it out too. She always yeah, see, puts that worm in her head. Your doesn't head. She? Yeah. I put it's on one of my trivia's. Yeah. Oh, it okay. might even be on this one. I it's don't probably yeah. We go back for. It's uh, recent. Yeah. Why don't you tell us about Mick Jagger there? All right. 1968. Mick Jagger joins a demonstration at Grosvenor Square in London to protest the Vietnam War. When the group estimated at 25,000 people marches to the American Embassy, they are met with police resistance and rioting ensues. Jagger leaves the protest just before it reaches the embassy, but uses the events as an inspiration for the Rolling Stones songs, Street Fighting Man. I love that song. That's wow. a great tune, man. I love great that song. tune. That's, and I'm not a big Stones fan, It's uh, but that one's a... I, and then when I found out what the story was about, kind of just added that, you know, oh, I like it even more type of feeling. I have yep. to admit, I've got three favorites. One is Street Fighting Man, the other is Get Off My Cloud, which is early Stones. And satisfaction is just a natural. Oh, I mean, no, absolutely. You know, I mean, Bitch when you hear me. that Who guitar come in, man, one? it just you know, gets you perked right up. See, and that one, not so much. I'm sick of it because they played it so much. Yeah, yeah I can it see wasn't, that. It wasn't. It wasn't. How do you think I feel? My favorite, but it's not anymore. My, my favorite of theirs uh, would have to be Bitch. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd yeah have to be. Yeah. You got a favorite Stone song? No, I wouldn't say I have a favorite one. No, yeah. I kind of like uh, a wide range of them. Yeah. 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 They've uh, they've been through a lot too, sixties, seventies, eighties, today. Like I like the B side, you know me. I don't go yeah. for the A side hits. I I like the B side. It's just about every band. Yeah. In 1978, the Alan Freed biopic *American Hot Wax*, widely considered one of the best rock and roll movies of all time, it premiered in New York City, featuring appearances and performances by Jerry Lee Lewis, Chuck Berry, and Screamin' Jay Hawkins, who used to he used to do performances when he was drunk. You know, oh God! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all did back then for crying yeah. out loud. The well, alcohol. Jerry Lee and Chuck Berry, uh, yeah, they yeah. Yeah. big drinkers. That's right. 1978, Irish high school band U2, which just recently changed their name from the Hype when the Limerick Civic Week Pop 78 Talent Competition, you earning know. about one thousand dollars and a chance to record a demo for. CBS Records. So, that's, so it began. And so they, and there, you know, a lot of people, you, you don't hear how bands like that got their start, right? And they're mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. Okay, in 1985, Richard Ramirez kills a man and attacks a woman at a house in Rosamead, California, leaving an ACDC yeah. hat behind at the crime scene. Wow. Ramirez continues his killing spree and becomes known as the Night Stalker. When it becomes clear that ACDC is his favorite band, the group is accused of encouraging crime <laughs> and devil worship in their music. The devil. You gotta be kidding oh me, man. God. One Can of my favorite that? bands. Can you believe that? How does that make the, the guys at ACDC feel? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. oh, They're all exactly. creative musicians, having fun, rock and rollers, life is wonderful, and somebody tells you that. Yeah. That's disgusting. Yeah. I, yeah. Love, I love this next story, though. And... Uh, uh, it didn't get a lot of publicity until it, after it happened, like long, much after it happened. But uh, reacting to a Beastie Boy concert three weeks earlier where the group used a giant inflatable penis as a <laughs> stage prop and encouraged girls in the crowd to bare their breasts, the city of Columbia, Georgia, passes an anti-lewdness law prohibiting nudity, uh, simulated sex, and objectionable language at any sh show that would be attended by minors. That and prop was massive. Oh, yeah. It wasn't like it was a little thing on the side of the stage. Mm -hmm. It took over the whole stage in the center. It was huge. Do you mean it was a great big penis? It was very, very big. A very big penis. Very, very. Well, it was very popular, I'm sure. Anyway. Not, really. Not so popular, actually. <laughs> well, depending on which uh, you know side of the tracks. Yeah. By the way, is my mom here right now? Yeah. She might Maybe. be. She lurks around here. 
2018 on this day at their St. Patrick's Day concert in Brussels, the script by everyone in the audience of 8,000 to drink, setting a Guinness World Record for world's biggest round. Imagine that uh -huh. in Brussels. And I'll do this one right off the top. The sci-fi musical Lost Horizon this week in history scored by Burt Bacharach, who just died, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. Bombs at the bo this this thing just bombed at the box office. The failure precipitates Bacharach's split from longtime songwriting partner Hal David and Dion Warwick, who had performed their songs for more than a decade. Lost Horizon, starring Peter Finch and Liv Allman, is a musical take on Frank Capra's 1937 film about a group of plane crash survivors who discover a utopian city. Bacharach and David, who started their fruitful partnership in the late 50s, writing hits for Gene Pitney and Perry Como, wrote the songs together, including the title track. While Lost Horizon, the song was a minor hit, made number 63 on Billboard, sung by Sean Phillips. Lost Horizon, the movie, was a disaster. The kindest reviews came from the New York Times, which called the film a big, stale marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> But, but you know, uh, I mean, that's not fair to talk about Bacharach like that because he was the greatest songwriter of all time, I think. One of them, anyway. They're amazing. Yeah. Friends, though. Yeah. The three of them, they had a little bit of a well, tit a tat there, but they well, remained friends at the end. They were still well, very close. Any good. relationship you're together that long, yeah. well, it's it, it, it can happen. So it's, well, it's, it's going to happen, it's ups and downs. You know, so, well, so you're going to have bad albums, good albums, good yeah. movies, bad movies. Exactly. You know, like nothing is perfect. Yeah. Uh, 1942, Glenn Miller become the became the first person to be awarded a gold disc for his Chattanooga Choo Choo single. So yeah, that's an interesting one. Did not know that, as a matter of fact. You want, take, you want to take 1967? In 1967, Bill Wyman, Rolling Stones, was quoted, it's all right leaping about the stage when you're 20, but when, you're, when you get to 25, it gets to be a bit embarrassing. I don't think so. I still jump around and freak out. I don't <laughs> care. Honestly, 20 to 25, What? How? what's the difference? Yeah. Five years? Uh, yeah really? If he had said 55. I could 20, uh, 20 and 60 or something. Yeah. yeah. But 20, that's why well, I thought that well, was two, a, your brilliant comment. Two, I thought, let's oh put it this God. way. At 55, I am not bounding around the stage like I used to. That's for darn sure. So. <laughs> in 1945, this week in history, the number one song in America is Rum and Coca-Cola by the Andrews Sisters. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the generations know that. It's a sanitized cover of a Calypso song about American servicemen in Trinidad who get drunk and solicit prostitutes. And, hey, I don't write this stuff. Yeah. Leah does. <laughs> 1964, the Beatles set a new record for advanced sales in the U.S. with 2,100,000 copies of their latest single, Can't Buy Me Love. And when pressed by American journalists uh, in 1966 to reveal the song's true meaning, Paul McCartney stated, I think you can put any interpretation you want on anything, but when someone suggests that Can't Buy Me Love is about a prostitute, I draw the line. So. I guess so. <laughs> I would too. 1970, Motown singer Tammy Terrell died of a brain tumor at the age of 24. She collapsed on stage on October 14th, 1967 into Marvin Gaye's arms during a concert in Hampton, Virginia. Initially, Terrell recorded solo, but uh, from 1967 onwards, she recorded a series of duets, including Marvin Gaye, and uh, yeah, that must have just been brutal. Can yeah. you imagine that happening? Like He actually walked away for a while. Just because of, yeah. He, I, did, he had a really difficult time with that. Well, uh, really he difficult. was he was close with Tammy Turner. Yeah, they're, they're, they're friends. So. Nineteen sixty-seven onwards, she recorded a series of duets. Um, oh, sorry, I already read that. And um, yeah, Marvin Gaye reacted to her death by taking a four-year hiatus from her concert performance and went on to self-isolation. So, yeah, yeah it just got to be uh, Marvin just, Gaye. Had, you know, he was a wonderful entertainer, but what a tragic life he had. Oh God, yeah. You know, getting shot by his I father. Love Marvin Gaye. And wow. uh, Marvin Gaye was uh, incredible. I heard it through the grapevine. I mean, it doesn't matter how many times you hear that song, you can uh, you can uh, relate to it. It's well, just well, one of those timeless songs. We'll know? kick this one yeah. over to Amanda. Okay, right. in 1991, seven members of country singer Reba McIntyre's band and her road manager were among ten people killed when their private jet crashed in California, just north of the Mexican border. McIntyre, who had given a private concert in San Diego for IBM employees 
the night before was not on the plane. Imagine oh, that. Geez. Again, what a tragedy. Like, yeah. just insane. It seems that, uh, you know, rock stars and country stars are just... Well, uh, it's that same kind of lifestyle in a lot of ways. The traveling on the road. The well, they're on a plane a lot more yeah. often. Absolutely. Yeah. And well known. The yeah. other planes that go down, you just don't hear about them as much because they don't have the famous personality. Yeah. Unless you yeah. watch yeah, the show right? Mayday. Well, you know, uh, and uh, <laughs> you're right, and it happens in sports as well because Manchester United and, and yeah. the entire the, team. The, Ru the Russian hockey team, uh, that yep. was the latest yep. one. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it happens a lot. R and then Ricky you, like, Nelson, he died. You, 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 well, you look at Buddy yeah. Holly in the Big Bopper. You Buddy look at know. Stevie Ray Vaughan in the helicopter. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Uh, this is a bit of trivia for you was Eric Clapton was on that helicopter with Stevie Ray Vaughan yeah. on the roof of that building, and his son fell out the window in New York City. Oh my God. And somebody came and grabbed him and said, get off the helicopter, you gotta go to your son. And the helicopter took off and fucking crashed. Oh my God. Seriously. That's like, actually one of the trivias that I did a, whale, a, wise, a, way, a ways back. Yeah, wow. and that wow. is his- it saved his life. His son, uh, there was a screen in the, in the hotel room window and his son went, pushed on it and ended up falling out five stories and uh, they wow. pulled him off the helicopter. So there's a bit of trivia. And then here's a bit more. Courtney Love gained the distinction of being the first AOL subscriber to have her email account shut down, mainly for the death threats she posted against people she thought deserved them. <laughs> I'll take this. Uh, and Coolio, of all people, uh, his first job was a fireman. Wow. That's, that's, that's a like, pretty good job. That's a pretty cool job. You it know, is. like it's... Uh, Hey, respect, man. No, no kidding. Absolutely. It's not an easy job. Okay. You want to do 1969? Absolutely. Yep. 1969, John Lennon and Yoko Ono get caught standing in the dock at the Southampton trying to get to Holland or France <laughs> as passport problems stall their wedding. They get married five days later in Gibraltar, and use their adventure in the lyrics to the ballad of John and Yoko. Wow, you know what? I've often wondered about that, you know, and there you go, and she's, digs, she's like a good gardener out there, tur <laughs> you know, digging up. <laughs> Unbelievable. Turning up stories. Unbelievable. 1972, the Los Angeles Police Department were called to go uh, visit KHJ Radio in Hollywood after receiving several phone calls from listeners who thought something was wrong because the DJ, Robert W. Morgan, played my record, Puppy Love, over and over for an hour and a half. People thought the station had been taken over by fans, and Robert was still in control, though. He explained that he had grown so tired of teeny boppers requesting it, he decided to play it repeatedly until everyone got tired of it. I guess it backfired on him because thanks to, in part to him, it became a hit. Yeah. But you know what? There's a guy who was so creative, and he was so good on the radio. The guy was legendary. And that's not the first time that's happened. Oh, no, that's happened a few times over the years. Uh, I heard a story, CKBB and Barry, Norman B. told me, I don't know if he was pulling my leg or not, and to this day I can't confirm it, but I've heard that it might have happened. Uh, I don't know why, who they're protecting, I don't know. But anyway, this guy at CKBB locked himself in the control room. And he put two marching records on. Oh, jeez. Back to back. And he would come on after every segment and go, march, you bastards. And, just, <laughs> and this went over CKBB Airwaves for an hour and a half. And so uh, uh -huh. they could get in to get him out. But that's not hey, because them. there's other stations in the States that have done the same thing. Yeah. They've yeah. got one song, yeah. Stairway to Heaven, was yeah. the one that this that one station one. in the States. Louie Louie is another one. repeatedly, yeah. repeatedly for... Like yeah. an hour and a half, they played Stairway to Heaven, and they're like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. There was a Louis Same Louis day. station. This played, do you know how many versions of Louis Louis there are in oh, recording? Oh, yeah, it's crazy. There's 10,000 of them, apparently. Yeah. And that's all they played yeah. was Louis Louis. <laughs> <laughs> they were known as... All the variations. Guess, guess what? They were world? known as Louis yeah. Louis Radio. They do. There you go. All right, 1979, at a party following a Stephen Stills concert, Elvis Costello gets into an argument with Bonnie Bramlett of Delaney and Bonnie and reportedly <coughs> refers to Ray Charles as a blind, ignorant, and word, mm -hmm. 
I will never say that word out of my mouth. No. Costello pleads inebriation and says he was trying to outrage her. And I'm sure bringing up that word would outrage most people. So yeah, I, definitely. That, you know, that's, that's, it would outrage me if I heard somebody saying that. That's right. Pop them in the jaw. I wouldn't yep. have a problem with that. Absolutely. 2017, President Donald Trump tweets about Snoop Dogg's Lavender video where the rapper points a toy, toy gun at Ronald Klump, the <laughs> ruler of the world run by clowns. <laughs> the tweet reads, can you imagine what the outcry would be if Snoop Dogg, failing career and all, had aimed and fired the gun at President Obama? Jail time, as President Trump has unleashed angry tweets at Saturday Night Live and Meryl Streep. His umbrage with Snoop Gets the rapper trending quickly, sending the video over 6 million views. Have you ever seen the video? No. No. It's hilarious. And literally everybody in the video are clowns. Uh, right. And at one point, you can see Snoop and Trump, and I forget who's on the other side. Well, Clump. And they're like, smoking doobies. back and yeah. forth. Smoking, and they're all clowns. Smoking doobies in a van <laughs> down by the river. Feet. Yeah. And of course, watch it. The link is on the feed. It's we all know how Snoopy got his name because he looked like a little dog when he was a little boy. Yeah, yeah that's, why, that's how he na got named. And but you didn't know that, did you? No, I didn't. Yeah, he got named because I'm like learning something new. His mom thought he looked like Snoopy when yeah. he was a baby. <laughs> that's that's, that's his real name, and I always thought it was a made-up name. You know, like like his real name's Dave Smith or something. Right. Yeah. You know? But uh, yeah. No. You want to grab that one? Is okay, in 2019, the New York Public Library opens the Lou Reed Archive with photos, recordings, and other media documenting his career as part of the opening. The library issues 6,000 special edition library cards with Reed's image and releases. releases a reading list devoted to Reed among the, section the selections. selections. Essential Teachings by the Dalai, Dalai Lama, Lama and the Basketball Diaries by Jim Carroll. The materials were donated by Reed's wife, Lori Anderson, who turned over the collection, which includes over 600 hours of recordings. It took two years to catalog and prepare the archive. Yeah, guaranteed was, there was over 600 sure. hours of recordings. You know, that, that was wasn't that a few days a week to do that either. No, no. no Lou he, Reed was no. a strange kind of guy. He was, he a, he was an interesting dude. A very. He, uh, he wasn't very friendly with the pro, with the media. No, didn't no, like he the didn't. Interviews. He rarely did an interview. You yeah. rarely can find an interview anywhere with Lou Reed. Yeah. Um, he didn't he, trust him though. He uh, he got screwed over royally by his first uh, record company, Big Time. He had no rights to any of his music, none. Uh, again, a lot of bands back in that time did. You know, you look at CCR, they didn't have rights for almost 30 years. They didn't get their rights back. But, uh, yeah, he just didn't trust anybody. He was. Uh, he ended up actually turning into a crotchety old bastard. Nobody talked to him anymore and had to become a recluse. And, yeah, it's, it's, it was sad. The guy wrote a lot of good music that a lot of people don't know either. He wrote a lot of stuff. Um, he wrote stuff for like guys like John Lee Hooker. He wrote stuff for, uh, oh God, what was the other? He's a great yeah. musician too. Oh, he was a great musician. And uh, Buster Poindexter, I know he wrote a bunch of stuff for them. The New York Dolls wrote a bunch of stuff for them. Um, you know, he was he was a very uh, popular songwriter as well, and a lot of people don't know that. Here's a tidbit. I'll read some of the stuff here. The first record that Jamie Foxx uh, bought was James Brown. Get up, I feel like a sex machine. <laughs> <laughs> The Who were the only band that asked to be paid in advance at the Woodstock Festival and refused to go on yeah. until they got their money. Yeah, not stupid, those in guys. Way, oh, yeah, in a way, you can think, yeah, I guess that would be... That would be a smart move. No, be, after yeah. the shit show that was going on there, yeah. and they well, saw yeah, what the hell was going on, yeah. they were oh. not stupid. I, I watched the documentary on it, and it was yeah. just like, wow, man. Like, Brutal. The crap that was going on, and same with the second one. The second Woodstock oh, they every did. One of them had oh my massive God. things going on that you just shake your head. 1955 no. popular country star Jimmy Dean interviews uh, Elvis Presley on Dean's Washington, D.C. television show, Town and Country Time. A nervous Elvis answers every question with, Yup, nope. And uh, so that was a Bobby Bear. And Bobby Bear yeah. was the same way. He used to be the a first yip. ever gold record was in 1958 was awarded for sales of a million copies 
goes to Perry Como's. If you catch a bully, you You want to go to sleep? Listen to some Perry. That'll help you. Still alive. You what was that thing? SCTV used to do it. In 1981, after toughing out a concert in Madison, Madison, Wisconsin, in severe pain, Eric Clapton is flown to St. Paul, Minnesota, where he's treated for severe ulcers mm. that nearly killing him. The rest of the tour is canceled and Clapton spends almost six weeks in the hospital recovering. Wow. In January 1982, he returns to Minnesota and enters rehab to treat the alcohol addiction that caused his ulcers. Now there's a guy that's abused himself over the years. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. one of Clapton. many. What is it? Well, like I say, it, it, that era was just filled with that stuff. It was, uh, you know, you could take almost any band, whether it was a rock band, whether it was a country a band, the, the, if it wasn't drugs, it was alcohol or, it, both. or both, right? So, yeah, it was just littered with it at that time. And a lot of it was, and I truly believe this, especially being a musician, is that that high you get when you're on stage and your concert's going well and the energy you get back from the, the, the audience, um, that high you get, you look for it all the time. And that's part of the problem is you, you're trying to feed that high and it's it, the only time it ever happens is on stage. Nope. It's the only time you can't get that hot. It's a different uh, euphoria. Yeah, you know, it's a great it's euphoric a, feeling. It's, it? uh, yeah. I played in front of crowds, and man, you come off that stage and you're just especially bounding. with the response. Yeah, yeah. well, that's and what I mean. To, especially with certain songs. Mm -hmm. You hit a note with the majority of the audience, right. and they let loose, and you just go, "Whoa!" Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, uh, you know, like even the the last show we did at the Appalachian, the the response, you know, when you've got the crowd doing this, and this, you can't see anything yeah. but heads bobbing everywhere. That energy is just absolutely incredible, and I don't care what drugs you do or alcohol or anything. You'll never get that. You'll, high. you'll never you, get that you, same. You know one. what? Another energy like that, maybe not quite as intense as a musician, is a disc jockey. If you get people rocking, oh, man, oh same thing. You yeah. feel like a no, million no. bucks. Any kind of entertainment, whether you're yeah. doing a, a live performance on stage in yeah. an opera or whatever, mm -hmm. that energy you feel from a crowd, mm -hmm. you cannot get that until the next night when you go back on and do it again. Yep. It, it, it's it, the, anything else you take is not going to do it. I'll tell you that. 1998, weeks after Johnny Cash's Unchained wins the Grammy for guest, uh, for best country album, his producer Rick Rubin takes out a. Full page ad in Billboard with a photo of the singer giving the middle finger along with a text. American Recordings and Johnny Cash would like to acknowledge the Nashville Music <laughs> Establishment and Country Radio for your support. So there's a finger out yeah. for uh, Eric. We're going to have to get through. We're getting behind time here. Oh, listen to this one. In his teens, Ozzy Osbourne served uh, two months in Winston Green Prison, Birmingham for burglary. He was actually... Caught being a burglar. I yeah. have no idea about that. Oh, he, he, was a, he was a shit disturber. <laughs> oh, I can imagine. Oh, he still was. What he still was, is. Still, still is. really is. Really, at the end of the day. Uh, Slash from Guns N' Roses uh, was quoted as saying, Drugs and sex go hand in hand when you're a rock and roll musician. Whereas if you were a violinist, it might be a little bit different. Yeah, you probably. never know. Some of these violinists could be pretty crazy out there. You know? Can I read the Eric Clapton one, Amanda? Okay. In 1965, Eric Clapton, concerned that the band is becoming too commercial, leaves the Yardbirds. His replacement is Jeff Beck. Well, and he, he just, just died. passed away Jeff as Beck. well. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just passed away not long ago. And, yeah, and again, he, a lot of people don't know who Jeff Beck is. Jeff Beck played with... Everybody, uh, Rod Stewart, Elton John, like, and they they had hard times. Oh God, then. yeah. You know, like who was going to pay for the gas to get to the gig? You yeah. know, they used to cheer, they used to share fish and chips. You know, Rod. Well, like like some of the quotes we've had before. Yeah. Remember when you're throwing that TV out the window? Yeah. Yeah. It's not coming from us. That yeah. 500 pounds is off your yeah. your money, not ours. When you look at the wrinkles <laughs> on Rod Stewart now, you know where they came from. Okay. Yeah. Because they didn't have it easy, and they're the yeah. real rock superstars, oh, God. the ones that just stick it out and ba you know, and live off the land. They're the ones that really deserve our praise. Because, oh God, yeah. Absolutely. You know, those guys are incredible. Like a, a lot of Rod's uh, music was, you know, with Jeff Beck on guitar. So, you know, mm -hmm. 
Uh, all right, we got. We'll finish up with one more. We got getting short on time. Yeah, here. we are. Isaac Hayes quits the TV series South Park after an episode <laughs> mocks his religion of Scientology. This smooth soul singer is the voice of Chef since the show's first season in 1997. His character works in the school cafeteria where he helps the children understand adult concepts like, you know, things like prostitution. You don't pay for her to stay, you pay for her to leave afterwards. He often gets distracted and starts singing about making sweet love to a woman. His musical interludes become a popular feature on the show and in 1988 his song, or 98, sorry, his song Chocolate Salty Balls, Yes I Love You, <laughs> is released as a single and hits number one in the UK. And, uh, yeah, See, I now I didn't know that Isaac Hayes was in South Park. I, I, yeah. When I found out, I didn't know. I started, I started watching it to watch him. Just to see the show. Because <laughs> some of the stuff he says yeah. is priceless, man. It's yeah. Oh, it's hilarious. Yeah. All right, so. let's get out of here. We're done for another week. And uh, the uh, Top 40 Timeline podcast featuring Big Daddy, Lee Lakin, and Amanda Bassett. And, of course, Leah Lywood gets it, is yeah. our producer, as always. And uh, we, we are uh, actually advertising for the Diabetic Society this week. <laughs> we have all kinds of candies here. We've got uh, Star Mix, and we've got uh, mini jelly beans and Skittles. All kinds of stuff. So we'd like to thank you for joining us again. And uh, don't forget, Saskatchewan, you can see your dog walk away for a week. And go and see them. See them in the summertime. Absolutely. It's beautiful in the summertime. <laughs> Have a great week, everybody, and we'll catch you on the B side. That's right. And I'll. How about that? Perfection. Absolutely. Expanding community worldwide. Expanding community worldwide. You finish it off, Lee. I don't remember it. <laughs> Neither do I, as a matter of fact. Halton Hills, Ontario, <laughs> Canada's hometown. That's what I always say. Oh, we're going to get into I've a boxing match I've been away for a while. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bye, everybody.